officer alan wilson so welcome to the program good to have you with us again thank you for having me here now we just said the national labor relations board is launching a war on right to work states that's pretty strong language i take it that you agree with that though well absolutely i agree with it but i'm gonna take it one step farther um, I believe as a right to uh, work state attorney general that this could have equally a harmful effect on union states. Um, to my friends out there in union states, uh, ask yourself this question. If you're a company somewhere in the world, whether outside of the United States or within this country, and you're watching this unfold right now where a company is basically being extorted by the NLRB on whether or not they can make a decision to expand beyond that state's borders, are you going to be inclined to move to that union state? It's like the analogy of flypaper. No company is going to land in the state uh, that they don't think they'll ever be able to leave because the unions are now going to have a, strong, a, a leash on them. So this, this could actually harm union states just as much as right-to-work states. At the heart of the issue is a strike that took place against Boeing at one of its factories in Washington state. Following that strike, Boeing decided to move that assembly line to South Carolina. And uh, we are told that, uh, that that is retaliation, illegal retaliation against the union, uh, against Boeing, because it retaliated against the union. Now, it, does, does a, a, a company have the right to move a, a, an assembly line after a strike? First off, it's kind of funny that they call it a retaliation when Boeing actually increased the, the union membership by nearly 2,000 employees since they announced their move to South Carolina. So I don't quite understand the retaliation when they left the union better off uh, than before they, the expansion. I also find it kind of ironic that we received this complaint uh, last week and uh, Boeing had announced over 17 months ago its intention to expand to South Carolina. You know, so, you know, in the last 17 months, we've added 1,000 jobs to South Carolina. We began uh, expansion of the manufacturing facility in North Charleston. And it's now, after all of this has been done, that the NLRB speaks out. I find that awfully interesting and, and ironic. Uh, does the National Labor Relations Board have the power to stop this? Stop this? Absolutely not. Well, let me say this. It has no congressional, uh, the, the Congress never intended it for it to have this authority. In fact, the National Labor Relations Act, you know, it was designed to guarantee um, certain rights and to also to kind of facilitate the relationship between employers, employees, and unions. Um, I think the legal precedent that they are relying on is a case whereby a company retaliated against employees for wanting to unionize, to have a union election. Uh, in this case, Boeing is already unionized. Um, all they did is simply say that our, our company is being adversely affected, and if we can't work things out, we're going to have to expand. And that's exactly what they did. They made a private business decision to expand beyond the borders of the state they were currently in and actually added jobs to that state and to a second state. And now the unions are upset that they've expanded beyond the borders of Washington state, and now, they're, now, now ironically, the union or I should say the NLRB is retaliating against Boeing. And this is not the first time that NLRB has, uh, uh, you know, I want to say attacked South Carolina. You mentioned earlier about the lawsuits uh, with uh, uh, South Dakota and Utah, or, and, excuse me, Arizona, regarding their private ballot uh, initiatives. We had the same private ballot vote in South Carolina in November, and we were one of the four original states threatened with a lawsuit. They're actually suing those two western states right now. Um, I think we're next. Um, and, this, and also, the same union uh, has threatened and, and actually sued our governor uh, for, sim for simply making public statements on policy against the union. So they're claiming that their due process and uh, uh, First Amendment rights were violated. So they, they've actually attacked South Carolina three times. Okay. So this is, uh, who's the one retaliating right now? Yes, sir. Alan Wilson, Attorney General, South Carolina. Thanks for joining us. So we apologize for the delay in the audio there, but I think we got it all right. Thanks very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.